When performing backward long jumps or BLJs in Mario 64, most people align themselves parallel to the stairs, but occasionally you can be slightly angled. And some people have even claimed that this can help make BLJs more consistent. I wanted to dive deeper into this and use science to see if there was any truth to this statement. I touched on the topic briefly in my recent hour long deep dive into BLJs. In that video, I looked at the theory of how they work, ranked the different A-Press combinations, and explained why 600 BPM is the best button mashing speed. I ended with a list of all my recommendations, and in particular, when I investigated BLJing at an angle, I concluded that it didn't help. But there was something I missed, which encouraged me to revisit this problem. People generally keep holding straight up on the control stick during BLJs, even if they're at a slight angle. And, depending on the camera angle, this usually results in straining along the stair direction, which happens to be on the z-axis, or opposite Mario's facing angle, which is slightly askew from the stair direction. For both of these cases, I proved that BLJs are less likely to work than if we were angled straight on. If we're angled straight on, we have to be within 13.89 units of the next step before jumping to guarantee clipping into the stairs and starting the BLJs. But if we're not parallel to the stairs, this critical distance decreases i.e. it becomes harder to clip into the stairs the more angled we are. This plot shows how the critical distance decreases as our angle deviation increases, for the two common straining strategies. As long as we're straining parallel to the stairs, which is the green line in this plot, the critical distance decreases very slowly, so you don't have to worry too much about our angle being slightly off. But still, the critical distance decreases, so it seems that angling our BOJs can't possibly help. However, after I released my original video, I got a YouTube comment from someone called Eva, and he gave a suggestion which I thought about for a few minutes and then discounted. But then, I suddenly realised I'd heard that name before. And then I realised I should probably take the suggestion a bit more seriously. To illustrate, let's take an analogous scenario and play a little game. You're in HMC, and you long jump at a weird angle and are about to fall to your death. The Mario 64 gods pause the game, and you have to decide which direction to hold the control stick on the next frame to gain as much distance towards the ledge and grab it. Should we hold the control stick A, up towards the ledge, B, slightly upright, i.e. our facing angle where our momentum is directed, or C, at an angle of theta minus arctan of tan theta over 0.15, where theta is our facing angle, which, if we're angled slightly to the right, ends up being holding the control stick slightly up left. Well, let's see. Holding up leads to our death. Holding slightly upright leads to our death. But if we hold up left, against all odds, we ledge grab and survive. Now, falling to your death is a great motivator, but the exact same thing happens when we BLJ. In this case, we need to get enough distance to clip inside the stairs. Here we're angled slightly to the right, and if we hold up as we normally would, we jump cleanly over the step and fail the BLJs but if we hold up left instead, we clip into the stairs and the BLJs work. That was Eva's suggestion, that we should drive BLJ angled slightly to the right, but straining slightly to the left. And if we include this possibility, we can increase the critical distance needed to start BLJs. In other words, it becomes easier to clip into the step. The optimal straining angle is given by the arc tangent equation I showed earlier. The mathematical proof is included in an appendix at the end of the video if you're interested. Before we investigate whether this new strategy is at all practical, let's have a look at the theory and understand what's actually happening here. When Mario jumps or long jumps, he's in the air and cannot turn. All we can do is hold the control stick to strain in a certain direction. The distance Mario can move in one frame is very small, so let's scale down his model to see what's happening. If we look at all the possible positions he can occupy in the next frame, it forms an ellipse with a semi-major axis of 10 and a semi-minor axis of 1.5, and it's displaced from the initial position by the initial forward velocity minus some drag. If you're wondering why 10 and 1.5, it comes from these lines of code that determine how Mario's forward and sideways velocities update. The fact that sideways straining is stronger than forward straining for a single frame gives rise to some weird effects. If we're angled straight on from where we want to go, we can gain max distance in the forwards direction by just straining forwards. But if we're angled slightly to the side, we can actually gain larger distance along the forwards direction. Not by straining up, but by straining far to the side, approximately up left. The BLJ case is very similar, except that we're facing backwards 
and the initial velocity is multiplied by 1.5 at the start of the long jump. Here, at this distance from the step, if we're angled straight onto the stairs, we can't clip into them. But if we're angled slightly and we strain up left, we get more distance and we can clip into the step and start BLJs. If we label our facing angle from the positive z direction as theta, and our straining angle as phi, and use a bit of calculus, we get our formula for the optimal straining angle. On this plot, the x-axis shows how many degrees we're angled to the right, and the y-axis shows the optimal angle to the left that we have to hold the control stick. But how precise does this need to be to give an improvement? I'm willing to bet that nobody doing RTA runs of this game can calculate the arc tangent function in their head while playing. Well, generally, the optimal straining angle is somewhere between holding the control stick straight up, that is 0 degrees, and holding it up left, 45 degrees. From my testing, a realistic angle deviation that can be achieved consistently is between about 3 and 7 degrees. And a straining angle directly between up and up left, i.e. 22.5 degrees, falls neatly in this range. So we can just hold the control stick in this direction instead of worrying about straining at the exact perfect angle. Here we see how the critical distance changes over a realistic angle range for three straining strategies. The green line is with straining parallel to the stairs, i.e. holding the control stick straight up. The orange line is with optimal straining following the arctan formula. And the blue line is always holding at 22.5 degrees left. And for our realistic angle range of between 3 and 7 degrees, straining at 22.5 degrees left is almost as good as the optimal angle, and it's a noticeable improvement over straining parallel to the stairs. Here's me executing this strategy. I'm tempted to end the video there and let you believe that we've discovered some groundbreaking new improvements of BLJs, but we have to be honest scientists and not get carried away. Just because this strategy makes it easier to get the first clip doesn't mean that there's an overall benefit. We have to consider the whole process, not just the first clip. In my first video, I concluded that there are three main strategies for BLJs. A frame perfect strategy where we press A on frames 146 or 148, a fast mashing strategy of 600 BPM, equivalent to pressing A on frames 147, and a slow mashing strategy of 400 BPM, which half the time is equivalent to pressing A on frames 1610. Note that this is not a typo, it's 400 BPM not 450 BPM, which used to be considered the optimal speed but was then subsequently debunked. So considering these three major strategies, does angling our BLJs and straining optimally give any tangible benefit? Or is it just a theoretical curiosity? There are many factors at play here, and as usual, the best way to find the answer is by an experimental test. Starting from a save state, I'll see how many successful BLJs I can get on the endless stairs in 5 minutes, loading the save state every time I get past the teleporting region of the stairs. I'm using a Python program I created that lets me set my A-press combinations exactly, so how well I can mash won't be a factor. Also, I'll take multiple trials of each measurement so that I can get a mean and standard deviation to take into account the experimental uncertainty. This is a rather crude test, but which was sufficient enough to share the relative strengths of the three main A-press strategies. But now let's see what happens if we BLJ at an angle. I'll test for when we're facing 5 degrees to the right, first with holding straight up on the control stick, and then with holding at the optimal angle of roughly 22.5 degrees to the left. In the first instance, we get slightly worse results, but the effect is very minor and barely even noticeable. Unfortunately, even though we've proved that it becomes easier to get the first clip, we don't see any measurable benefit from BLJing at an angle, even with the optimal straining. Perhaps the improvement is just so minor that it can't be discerned from this crude measurement, but this is a moot point. If the effect is so minor that we have to study it under a microscope to see it, we can safely say that there's no practical benefit. A little disappointing, but that's how science goes sometimes. I'd like to mention that the 600 BPM strategy suffers the most from being angled, and it's pretty easy to understand why. This strategy is quite unique in that for all the other A-press combinations, we stay glued to the stairs throughout the BLJs, but for 600 BPM, it's very common to jump over the steps, but nevertheless be moving so fast that we still have a net gain of speed when we land. This is all well if we're angled straight on, but when our angle deviates, we spend more time in the air before landing and thus can lose more speed especially if we're not straining directly opposite to the facing angle. So the 600 BPM solution is affected the most by being angled, although even this is a rather small effect, so I wouldn't lose sleep over it.
And so my BLJ recommendations remain unchanged. We should long jump straight on, but not worry too much if we're slightly angled. But perhaps all this talk of angles and optimal straining is more than just a theoretical curiosity after all. There is one place in the game I know where BLJing an extreme angle is useful, and the straining has to be very precise, so perhaps you can consider this video as an appetizer. I have some bonus information at the end for the hardcore amongst you, but first let me say a massive thank you to Philok, Matt, Salemba, Negative7 and Big Ted for supporting me after my first video. And thanks of course to Eva for his suggestions and discussions. If you'd like to get a shout out in my future videos, or just support me, you can donate via a link in the description. Thank you very much. You may be wondering why, during normal gameplay, we don't really notice how much stronger sideways straining is compared to forward straining. Well, it's due to a more important asymmetry. The forward velocity accelerates over time, whereas the sideways speed doesn't. For this video I just considered a single frame, but we can also consider the problem of finding the optimal straining that maximizes distance over a general number of frames. In broad, oversimplified terms, the optimal solution involves first prioritizing forward straining to accelerate and build up forward velocity, and then gradually transitioning into sideways straining, which is more optimal for smaller timescales. The optimal straining angle as a function of time is given by this formula. Small t is the current frame number, and large t is the total number of frames over which we want to maximize the distance. And sure enough, on the very last frame, this formula reduces to the single frame case I used for this video. The person who first figured out that the optimal straining should follow an arctan function was the very same Eva who gave me the original suggestion for this video. And the range of possible positions Mario can take when he's in the air and cannot turn is called the Eva ellipse. This shape starts off as the ellipse I showed earlier for a single frame, which is elongated in the sideways direction due to the increased strength of sideways straining. But over larger and larger timescales, it grows until it becomes more elongated along the forwards direction, which is the result of the forwards acceleration. The shape resembles a super ellipse, i.e. an ellipse shape but with more rounded corners. It's fascinating, but perhaps I'll save more info for a dedicated video. Thanks for watching, and to reward you, I'll leave you with a nice mathematical derivation. If that doesn't make you subscribe, then I'm out of ideas.